My name's Melanie. I like to say that I'm a physicist, speaker, writer with a taste for adventure. Uh, that's because, <laughs> obviously maybe, I quite like to uh, get outdoors and uh, I enjoy skiing and climbing and hiking and that kind of thing. And so over my career, I've kind of enjoyed mixing my my passion. So I, I enjoy seeing science in, in the environment, I suppose you could say. Um, the, so let me tell you a little, a little bit about my, about my career. So I did um, a physics degree, first of all, at Bristol University. I did A-levels to get there, physics, maths, further maths and economics. Um, but I did my physics degree and that was great. I'd always wanted to do physics, um, well at least since, since high school, as long as I can remember it physics was always what really interested me. I think I like trying things, I like the experiments, I like sort of understanding how the world works. Um, but uh, so I went to university and I studied physics and when I came out of my degree I, just, I didn't, didn't know what to do next. I felt like you know, all through school I'd been working up to this particular point and suddenly I was there at this particular point and where did I go next? Uh, so, well, fortunately, my parents always encouraged me to travel and see the world and not worry too much about getting a job immediately. So that gave me a little bit of freedom, at least. And so I, uh, I, I set about traveling. I went to, um, I worked in the summer holidays, first of all, to save up some money and I uh, learned a bit of Spanish. And then I went down to South America, um, Central America, I learned to dive. Then I went up to Canada and went skiing for a month in Whistler, which was nice. And then uh, decided to come back home, work for a few more months. I think I stayed at home and worked for about five months in total. And then I went off uh, with my boyfriend to Australia. And we spent a bit of time there and again, more diving and came back through Asia. And I went trekking in Nepal, which, um, which I loved and was the start of something bigger for later. And, um, and uh, anyway, all right, we also, what else did we do? More diving again, <laughs> and then um, came back uh, on the Trans-Siberian Express back to Europe. And so that was about a year, um, that second trip in total. So that uh, by that point, I was about, um, I'd been almost two years since I graduated of me traveling and working. But during that period, I'd, um, I'd been thinking, of course, about what I was gonna do with my life. And I'd been, always interested in the environment when I was growing up and and also interested in the energy problem like from when I learned about fossil fuels and realized that we were going to run out I remember thinking like well what are we going to do so the energy problem had already always interested me and then when I was traveling I I learned more about the environment and climate change and I mean I saw things out there I saw I went trekking in the Himalayas and saw glacial retreat and diving we saw a lot of uh, corals bleaching uh, which is uh, to do with warming water temperatures and climate change and so i felt like i was sort of seeing science in the landscape and um and at, uh, around sometime i don't even remember when i wish i did but sometime i read about a new type of energy source called fusion which is what happens in the sun and the stars and uh, if we could harness that energy source and do it on earth it would it would create an energy source with no greenhouse gases, no long-lived radioactive waste, something um, that produces abundant energy. Like just one kilogram of fusion fuel produces as much energy as 10 million kilograms of fossil fuels. So that's like, you know, a kilogram's like a big bag of sugar. A sugar-sized bag of fusion fuel produces as much energy as hundreds of truckloads of coal. I mean, it's just, it's just crazy, um, like the potential. And I remember thinking, if we could do this, it would solve all our problems. I mean, it would absolutely be incredible. And so I got really excited about fusion. And um, and so when I came back from traveling, I decided that I wanted to do a PhD in fusion. And um, so that's what I did. I mean, there was a little bit of a delay in that <laughs> I came back in the summer holidays, so it was too late to get a PhD position for that September. So I had to wait an entire year uh, for the next year to to get my PhD position but that was in a way that was like one of the best things that ever happened to me so this is an important thing to remember because sometimes like often actually often your life doesn't go to plan um, but like try not to get too demoralized by it because sometimes 
the things that don't go to plan they give you something that you never planned for you know they enrich you in completely different ways I spent that extra year um, I worked a little bit until Christmas in London but then I managed to get myself a work experience placement in Lausanne in Switzerland and so I spent uh, the next sort of seven to eight months before I started my PhD uh, out in Switzerland which I just loved because um, well I, I think I actually found it by googling uh, what I Google fusion skiing and French or something like that which is like things that I like wanted to combine and um, and Lausanne came up they've got a plasma physics uh, fusion research place there that's like right on Lake Geneva um, I had views of Mont Blanc from my office I went skiing every weekend I, I met like incredible people from all over the world uh, like friends like international students and we had such a great time so although it wasn't planned and it meant that I had to wait an extra year to start my PhD one of my favorite best things I ever did um, so yeah so I started my PhD I did a PhD in fusion somewhere on this bookcase is the uh, the thesis the big purple one over there um, anyway so I worked in fusion and that's great and then I finished my PhD and I thought, oh my God, now what do I do? And um, long story short, I had got into communications a bit during my PhD because I just the lab where I worked, Cullum Centre for Fusion Energy, had a PR team. And so I'd got involved with giving tours of the machines, the Tokamax, where we worked. And I'd done some public talks and things like that. And I quite enjoyed talking to people about fusion. So. I got involved in that and as I was finishing my PhD, uh, somebody from the PR team, Chris, came to me and said, oh, you should apply for this thing. And it was to be a schools and colleges lecturer for the Institute of Physics for the year. And I got the job, miraculously. And so the next year, the following year, which was uh, 2010, I spent the whole year traveling around the country um, talking to schools about fusion energy. And during that time, I also wrote a blog about about fusion and about the travels that I was doing and after that I pulled it together into a book which actually just happens to be <laughs> here on my desk because I've been talking about it for a podcast um here you go it's called Star Chambers um and it's just about fusion and tokamaks basically it's just a, it's a crazy crazy little book really it just tells you about yeah tokamaks but it's got some unfortunate pictures of of me in it like looking ridiculous but you know, that's what happens. I can't find one now. You're fortunate. Oh, here's one. Me looking great. Um, anyway, but this is like, this is how things start. So <laughs> I, uh, I went around the country talking to children about fusion and I enjoyed it, made this little book, did a couple of other things in between because by this point I, I, was, I didn't know, well, I didn't have a job really. I was just being freelance and, um, and I didn't, I didn't really, I didn't really know where I was going. I worked for an invention company for a while, which was quite interesting um, and really hard, like really, really hard. Coming up with new ideas that people haven't actually thought of and patenting them was really difficult. But it was interesting, and I got an insight into um, into innovation. And also, it's interesting how it's interesting to see how how science has applications, like in in other. Yeah, other other fields, other places. Sometimes we worry or we think that if we're going to do a PhD in, in something scientific, then the only career path open to us is a researcher. And it's just not. I mean, it gives you expertise and it gives you insights into particular things which are valuable in companies, commercial companies. And uh, so working for the invention company was, was really interesting for me because I was using my physics, uh, but in a completely different context to you know, what I'd actually learned. And so that, that was interesting. There are so many places that you can go if you just just explore. Science degrees are, are really valuable. They really um, give you skills that are, that are very valuable in, in so many different industries. So you can really just pick something that you like um, and do something scientific like in that industry. I mean, even the creative industries need scientists, people who can use data, people who've got computing skills, you know, things like that. So. Um, it's not limiting in any way. Uh, anyway, this is getting a bit long. So long story short, I ended up being freelance and uh, over the last 10 years, I have done lots of really interesting things. Um, firstly, that crazy book that I wrote uh, a few years later, uh, a fusion company 
a, a private company now, so not a publicly funded lab, but a, a new startup private company uh, got in touch with me and said, we need someone who knows about fusion and can communicate with the general public about what we're doing. Would you like to work with us? And I said, yes, please, that'd be amazing. Um, and I still work with them. It's a company called Tokamak Energy. They're a private fusion company. And what's exciting about the private companies is that they're building on government research, but looking at ways to get to commercial fusion faster. They're really looking at ways to make economical power plants and you know, looking at the business plan uh, to really make fusion a reality. And, and that's what I want. I want us all to be using fusion energy and I want us all to have you know, a clean, sustainable like, energy uh, future so that we can do all the things that we want to do. You know, we can travel in planes and go on, go on holidays and um, you know, have all the energy that we need to do everything we need. Um, you know, without worrying about polluting the planet. So yes, I want to get to fusion. So working for a private fusion company is really exciting. Um, and now I also am the UK director of the Fusion Industry Association, which is uh, the industry that represents the, the private fusion companies. There are over probably between 20 and 30 all around the world at the moment, and it's growing rapidly. Uh, so it's a really exciting industry to be in uh, as we grow going forward. Um, and on the side, I've had this little parallel track. I mentioned earlier that I like science and adventure. And so as well as working in fusion, I've also uh, spent time <laughs> pursuing my, uh, my, my outdoor activities and combining them with science. So I wrote a book about the Northern Lights, which is actually up there on the, on the um, bookshelf. It's called Aurora. And, um, and it's actually the same physics that we use in fusion. It's plasma physics, but it's in an entirely different context. So the Aurora, is, is a plasma, it's the same physics as fusion. Uh, so I went like traveling around the world, meeting people from physicists to photographers who could uh, tell me about uh, the stories of the aurora, so the people, the places, the landscapes, and the science. Um, and so that was just the most beautiful, uh, most beautiful thing to do, uh, just to, I, I feel so privileged to have been able to make that journey and write that book. Uh, so that's one thing. And then I also climbed Everest a couple of years ago and wrote a book about the science that enables us to achieve that um, and the history of it, which isn't, uh, the book's not out yet. It needs to, I need to find a publisher still. Uh, but it was, again, an, an immense privilege to be able to do that as well. And I've learned so much from the people that I've met and, and the things that I've done. And I feel so lucky to be able to work in, in things that interest me and excite me and inspire me and to have such control of my own career. I'm freelance, I work for myself. I choose what I want to do. Um, and I want to work for like, private fusion companies and, and get, get fusion happening. I want to give public talks and tell people about the science of fusion or the Aurora uh, like or Everest. Um, having that interaction with people is so wonderful. And um, I write a lot of articles and do various other communications things. But um, so it's very varied. I'm sorry I have taken so long to explain to you what I actually do, but I hope that some of you find it useful knowing that you don't have to plan your career. I didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of followed my interests all the way through and seen where I ended up. And I was always confident that, well, maybe not always confident, but I'm confident now, um, that if you enjoy something, you know, if you're passionate about something, if you care about something, then you'll probably be good at it. And if you're good at something, then someone will probably pay you for it one day. I probably could work on the payment bit a bit more, but um, I've, made, I've been able to, to shape a career around the things that I care about. And I think that that's really important. So good luck with uh, whatever it is that you choose to do. Bye.